Dutch Sense here. It is 3.40 a.m. Central Time on Wednesday, January 11th, 2012. And we're looking at IntelliCast here. We've got some severe weather still going on throughout the United States. I'm going to go ahead and show you the warnings first. Turn on the severe warnings. Of course, you can see there's none really marked, even though we do have some hail detected here right at the border of Georgia and Alabama. And it's heading to the northeast. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this and see exactly where the strong cell is. You can see the pink defined in this strong cell. It's heading just northwest of Atlanta. So it's going to go right over Alpharetta and up over Juneau, and then it'll go up into the Carolinas. We'll see how long that sticks together as a severe cell, but when you look at this, it's a swirling low pressure system. It's got that counterclockwise rotation with the long arm extending all the way down into Florida, and it's going to be pulling this warm, moist air up off the Gulf, and it's going to mix up here with this cold weather cold to the north. Let me go ahead and turn the temperatures on, show you what the temperatures are here. Okay, color-coded, you can see the cold temperatures are in the purple, and then it goes into the light blues, and uh, here's the key down here. So you're looking at 30s in the light blues, and then the purples are in the 5 to 10 degree range, and then down here you've got your greens, which are in the 60 degree range. So when you get that mix, you get the strong uh, vortex rotation that happens when the cold and warm air mixes, and that produces your strong convection, which produces hail and tornadoes and damaging winds. So let's go back over here, turn on the radar again, and go ahead and animate this up. Also, just so everybody knows, IntelliCast has updated their system here to incorporate six hours worth of frames. So I want to say thanks to them, whoever decided to do that. That's awesome because it gives us a much more detailed view, not just a few frames, but it gives us six hours worth of frames at five-minute intervals. And you can see the movement. It's going up to the northeast, so you can watch out up here. There's going to be some kind of severe outbreak or storm, uh, winter storm. It depends on how cold this stays up here to the north. But when this system passes up, you'll definitely see it. Also, let's turn on the cloud cover. Okay, here's the cloud cover. These are the two systems that are producing precipitation right now. And let me animate this up. You know what? There's a much better way for us to look at this. Hold on one second. Let me go ahead and open... Uh, College of DuPage, and we'll go to the regional products, continental US, and turn on the infrared loop. And this is going to show us the cloud cover over the last 48 images that they've taken off the GOES satellite. And we can go ahead and put a color enhancement on here so you can see the temperatures and the cloud heights, and that gives you the better idea. When you see this right here, here's all our severe weather breaking out down here to the south. Okay. And to the north, you've got this cold system. It's a clipper coming in from the northwest. They're going to meet at some point right here uh, over the Great Lakes, maybe to the northeast, and then they're going to push each other off the coast. And we've got another system coming off here to the west. Let's go ahead and look at that. All right, let me animate this. And this is a polar view. We're looking down on the North Pole. You've got the United States down here, and then over here you've got India. Here is Africa over here on the right. Okay, and let me do the same thing. We're going to color enhance it. And then you see this pattern. Um, we've been getting this warm pattern throughout the United States, relatively warm compared to how it should be. And you can see the systems are steering up here right over the northern tip of Canada. They're coming back around. You've got a southern draw that's pulling in this these systems down over Mexico and Texas, and that's what's giving us this warm weather and the severe weather as it swirls up and mixes. But I want to draw your attention. I was talking about this the other day, about how the North Pole has shifted, in my opinion. And it's not just my opinion. They're launching satellites to study it. Over the past several years, over the past several hundred years, the North Pole has been moving from over the ocean over here into where this area that's red right now, that's the northern tip of Russia and it's Siberia, and they've been talking about how the North Pole is going that way. And when you look at this rotation of the storms here, you see right in here that it's just a steady stream of precipitation that's occurring, and the temperatures are just, you know, really just showing this massive storm system is starting to develop over Russia, and instead of over the North Pole. And then the, the storms themselves seem to be drawn to that point and be swirling around that point as opposed to what we would normally call the North Pole. 
That, of course, is shifting to the northwest, and as it shifts to the northwest, it pulls all these storms also up to the northwest, which means we're getting a more tropical latitude, which means, in my opinion, of course, that if this stays this way, that the warmer latitudes, so, uh, you know, down here near Mississippi and Arkansas, is now shifting north. So the weather that would normally be in the wintertime in Mississippi, Arkansas, Oklahoma, is now in, let's say, Missouri, Nebraska, Iowa, Illinois. And of course, then the weather that would have been in Missouri and Illinois now goes all the way up here to Minnesota, and that's giving everybody the, these mild winters in the United States. And over here in Russia, now, of course, you're seeing a massive amount of snow. When you see these cloud temperatures, that's indicative of the height and the amount of precipitation they're, they're producing. It's huge. I mean, you have the report just recently of 18 feet of snow in Alaska, and that's over just the course of maybe like a week or two of snow. So when you see that kind of precipitation, you can only imagine what's going on over here in Russia that we're not hearing about. So I hope that answers some questions. I'll put all the links down below so you guys can monitor this situation yourself. Cheers.